Romero Brito is an artist who was born in Brazil and is now working in Miami. He's what we call a pop artist. Basically, that means he's doing fun things that relate to us today. A lot of his artwork involves animals. It almost always has very bright colors, and you can see that he also incorporates pattern and design into his art. One thing that stereotypes his work is the thick black outlines around just about every shape, giving it sort of a cartoon um, coloring book quality. And he is the inspiration for our project today. The first thing that you're going to need is a scrap piece of paper and, of course, a picture of an animal. For my animal, I chose this little tiny rat that I found online. And I need to make it huge to fill the paper. And I'm going to do that just by sketching, really looking at the drawing of Little Mr. Rat. And just trying to make it as big as possible but still fit the page. If it goes off the page, that would be all right too. But we want the creature, the animal, to be the focus of this drawing. It does not need to be super, super detailed. In fact, it should almost look very comic book-like, cartoonish, super simple. I don't mind to have a bigger belly. Okay, so I've got my rat pretty much drawn how I like it. And then I'm going to go over it with a regular Crayola marker. And I'm using it on its side so that I can sort of get an idea of those black lines. This is just our perfect uh, practice paper. This is where we can figure out colors and perfect our design a little better. And that goes pretty quickly. The next step you're going to do is to divide up the space. With Brito's things, you can see he divided up anywhere that's large, he put a pattern in it. Um, background definitely has stuff going on. In his work you're going to see a lot of hearts and stars so if you'd like to incorporate those in there you could too. So I think I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to put a few of those hearts because I do love my little ratties. And for his body I'm going to give it some polka dots. Anywhere that there's a large area, you can either put a design in it or you can divide it up more by putting some lines and things in the background. Um, that's looking pretty good. I don't want to do too much to his face because I want you to be able to kind of still tell that it's a rat. If you put too many lines in there, it could get a little crazy. And again, this is just our practice piece, but it looks pretty good for a practice piece. Now it looks like he has his tongue sticking out. Okay, so then I have my practice. And I'm actually going to put my name on this so I don't lose it. This is then going to get traced onto tag paper. And you can use the window method, or maybe I'll have the light back light box fixed by Monday. When you trace this, only trace it in pencil and trace it really lightly because we're going to be we're going to be oil not oil painting, acrylic painting over the top of it and we don't want marker or dark pencil lines to interfere with that. So I'm going to go ahead and trace this and be right back. Now I'm ready to paint this in. We're going to be using acrylic paints which are in these little containers. These do stain your clothes. Do not get them on your clothing. It will not come out. When you open these, be very careful that you don't spill them everywhere. Don't set them on your painting because if it spills, you've ruined your whole painting. Always keep them off to the side. You're going to need water to wash your brush in between and paper towels to dry your brush because we don't want super, super watered down paint. This is supposed to be an opaque paint, meaning we do not see through it when it's done. What I would suggest when painting with acrylics is to outline first. I'm just outlining my shape. And don't stress about making your outlines perfect because when we're finished, we're going to go back over all your edges with that black line like Romero did. So that'll clean up a lot of 
wiggly arm movements and things like that that you might have going. But like I said, I outline first and then I fill in and I try to go in one direction with my fill-ins. And the paper is going to absorb the paint pretty quickly. You may end up having to do two coats because we do not want to see streaky acrylic paint. It needs to be one solid, gorgeous color. And hopefully you're able to see how quick this is drying. And what I've seen Romero Brito do is anything that he thinks he's going to paint one color, he'll go ahead and put a little splotch of color in there. And that just helps him sort of figure out, okay, I've got plenty of blue here and there that'll, that'll work. It helps him balance his pictures out. If you happen to make a mistake and get a color mixed in with another color, don't throw it away. We'll mix it up and we'll make something new and unique so that somebody else can use that color. All right, so let's say I'm finished for the day and I need to clean out my brush really, really good. You're going to take it to the sink, use shampoo, not shampoo, <laughs> soap in your hand, and you're going to shampoo your brush just like you would shampoo hair. You want to do a really good job getting this out of the paints, paint brushes or it will ruin the brushes forever. And they are sort of expensive. Now it only took me just a few minutes and I've got my rat almost fully painted. Next time I will show you how to outline.